So um, starting out again with a poll, um, just straight out of the gate, uh, which one of these properties is what we call an intrinsic property of a star, meaning that it is only something that depends on the star and doesn't depend on where we are observing it from. So only one of these is intrinsic, the apparent magnitude, brightness, luminosity, or distance. All right, I'm seeing most votes for C for the luminosity being intrinsic to a star, an intrinsic variable. Um, and that's correct. The luminosity is what I like to think of as the wattage of a star. Um, actually, it literally is the wattage of a star. The luminosity is the total energy per time that the star gives off. So just like a light bulb, uh, it's measured in watts in energy per time. And a higher wattage light bulb puts out more light into space and a higher wattage star also puts out more energy into space. Um, but this is different than the brightness. So the brightness is related to the luminosity, but just like I could have uh, you know, two identical lights, let's say car headlights from the same model of a car, the one from a car that's farther away from you is gonna look less bright. So the brightness is not a, an intrinsic property of the headlight. The brightness is actually uh, both a property of the headlight and depends on where you're observing it from. So the brightness is um, not an inherent quality of a star. And similarly, the apparent magnitude is a measurement of the brightness. And so both of those uh, depend on the observer's position in space. All right, there's actually, I should mention another quantity called absolute magnitude, which is more related to the luminosity, but your textbook only talks about apparent magnitude. So we're gonna not worry about absolute magnitude in this class. Um, you might encounter it though, as you're doing your research. So just be aware that those two magnitude numbers are different and you need to make sure that you're looking at apparent magnitude if you're looking up for whatever reason, magnitude numbers. Okay, so this is just saying the same thing I just said, the apparent brightness is the energy per second that we measure from a star. So that's what we can actually measure from here on earth. Uh, we cannot measure the luminosity of a star directly because we would have to be next to the star in order to measure it. If we were to measure the luminosity, the way we would want to do it is build a huge detector uh, that completely surrounds the star and measure the total amount of energy hitting that detector every second. Um, that's just not a reasonable thing that is possible. So we can't directly measure luminosities. We can calculate them though, if we know the apparent brightness. Uh, and when we actually report luminosities of stars, we can report them in terms of energy per time in SI units, that would be watts. Uh, but most of the time we don't do that because it's not a very helpful way to think about it. Instead, we usually tie it to the luminosity of the sun. So if something has one L sun, then it ha has a similar amount of energy giving off as the sun does. Uh, if it's higher, obviously it gives off more energy. And so that's a more handy kind of reference point. Okay, so um, luminosity and brightness are related with respect to distance. So just to get you thinking about this in terms of an everyday example, then compared to a distant star, what would you say is true of a nearby street lamp? So, I mean, the, the street lamp is definitely less luminous. It definitely doesn't put out as much energy per second as a star. Um, but since it's so much closer to us, it appears much brighter, right? And this is actually a huge problem uh, where light pollution in cities often makes it difficult to see starlight at all. And this is a problem for professional astronomy and influences where uh, astronomers choose to build telescopes. All right, so to quantify this relationship, uh, we'll use the inverse square law. And this is not the only inverse square law that exists, but it's the first one we'll come across in this class. And I just wanna break down the jargon here. Um, inverse just means that this is a relationship between numbers where one of the numbers is in the denominator of the equation. That's the distance here. Inverse square means that that thing that's in the denominator is squared. So the inverse square law for brightness means that the apparent brightness that we measure from a star is proportional to that star's luminosity divided by its distance squared. And um, maybe it's a little abstract to think of starlight, but uh, maybe you've had more experience with spray paint. And if you've ever uh, you know, spray painted something, you know that the closer that you are, the more paint 
is going to get on your object per unit area. And as you get farther and farther away from your object, um, there's less and less paint that would get on each given uh, square. Like let's say you're spray painting some grid paper, which why? But then each uh, grid would have less and less paint the farther away you go. Uh, and specifically, the reason that it depends on distance squared is because um, you're looking at how much of the light hits a given area. Uh, we're projecting onto a sphere here, which is why in this image, uh, this kind of grid is curved. So if we think of the total luminosity being all of the energy uh, that a star gives off, we're measuring that across an entire sphere. And if we wanna look at just a small um, chunk of space, then we measure it by area. All right, so since area goes as distance squared, that's why this is an inverse square law and not just an inverse linear relationship. Okay, so anyway, it's really important that this distance is squared uh, because when we decide we wanna calculate uh, brightnesses at different distance, we need to remember that square is there. So for an example, let's say that we measure a, the brightness of a light bulb is 400 lumens at a distance of one meter away from that light bulb. How bright would it be at a distance of two meters? Remembering that it goes as the inverse square of the distance. If we're changing the distance by some number, any factor, then you need to square that factor to see what happens to the brightness. And it goes down by the square of that factor. So if I triple my distance, I drop my brightness by a factor of one over three squared, which is a factor of one over nine. All right, this is important. And so the reason I'm belaboring this point is because some of you will forget it. And I want you to, I want less of you to forget it. Yes. So this is, I'm gonna ask you kind of a similar question in a different way. So we have this relationship between distance, brightness, and luminosity, and we can use any of the two quantities to learn something about the third quantity, right? If we know any of the two things, we can learn something about the third thing. So let's say that we have two stars that both appear to be the same brightness, but that we know maybe by measuring its parallax that star A is much farther away. Then what must be true about star A? I see the most votes for A, that star A must be more luminous, that's exactly right. So if we know that star A is much farther away than star B, then it has to be putting off way more energy in order to appear to be the same brightness. Okay, so this is like the critical piece of reasoning for today, which you're going to apply in uh, today's activity.